and he is the director of programs at Maxwell Leadership Council. He is an alumnus of Cambridge University, UK, and Aligarh Muslim University, from where he has done his CELTA and PhD in linguistics. Mashallah, we are having an, another grateful personality with us. Really, we are proud of you, sir, that you have taken this responsibility to shoulder us today with our teachers. Our teachers are innocent. We want to learn from you. Mashallah, we welcome you, sir, on behalf of the Ummah and all the teachers from Blair. Marhaba, welcome you, welcome you. Now I know what this session to thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your kind introduction. So a very good morning to all of you and assalamu alaikum. So I was here for the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes and I was listening to Janab Fayasa and uh, it was indeed a wonderful session. And a few points which he mentioned that uh, when a teacher goes to his class, he should be well prepared. So that is something very important, okay? And I believe that you all, since you all happen to be teachers, so you all go to your classrooms well prepared, okay? A few takes from that session, wonderful. And I believe that uh, when you are here, when you are joining the sessions in the morning, so definitely you are learning many things, right? Now here, this session, this is about English language. Okay, how to improve your communication skills. It's something very important. And uh, I want this session to be interactive. I want you to come up with your thoughts, with your views. If there is anything you want to ask, you can just ask me, okay? So first of all, it is important for us to understand what communication is. Who is a good teacher? That is a very relevant question. And you need to understand that. How can a teacher be effective in his classroom? So I believe that uh, you all must have thought about this question, a very relevant question. What is communication? How do you communicate effectively, effectively with your students? Well, when you look at this question, communication, you know that it's an exchange of ideas. You exchange ideas, you exchange thoughts. But do you ever care to find out if your information, if your thoughts, that has been transmitted, that has been well received? That is something very important. You need to find that out, okay? So if your information, whatever you are saying in the classrooms, if the students, they understand you, if your message that is well received, that means your communication is effective. But if on the other hand, they haven't well received your information, they don't understand you, that means your communication is not effective. So how do you make communication effective? And coming to English language, well, we all know that this is not our native language. This is not our first language, but we use English as a second language. This is the medium of instruction. And uh, we all know and understand how important this language is. There is no doubt about that. All over the world, you go to any part of the world, English helps you, right? And, you know, people from the North, if they go to the Southern part of the country, so they have difficulty in communicate, communicating with the local people. Why? Because their languages are different. Okay, a person in the North, he speaks Hindi. A person living in the Southern part of the country, he or she speaks his own native language. Okay, so English is a common language between them. And that helps us communicate. So how can we improve this language? That is a question. How can we make it better? Of course, we can be like, be like native speakers, but we can speak English the way it should be spoken, okay? So 
what are the things you do to improve your English language? And remember one thing, that if your English language is good, you all can be very good teachers. You all can communicate effectively with your students. Okay. So how do you improve your English? It's just like any other language. Okay. So always try to understand the basics. What are the basics? Make sure that you have a working knowledge of this language. So when I say a working knowledge, what do I mean to say? I mean to say that when you speak, when you write, you should speak or write correct English. Okay. So understanding the basics, that helps you. Speaking the way it should be spoken, as I said earlier, that is very important. So if you just focus on these two points, I'm very sure that you will be able to be effective in your classrooms. You will be effective with whosoever you are communicating with, right? So coming to the first point, how do you make your English better? First, number one, always pay attention to the basics of language, okay? Tenses are important. Make sure that you understand the tenses. Parts of a speech, very important, okay? So just make sure that you have clarity, you understand parts of speech. Number three, that is vocabulary. Just pay attention to three things. I'm not saying anything else. So parts of a speech, tenses, and vocabulary. Just three things you need to focus on, okay? So when I say parts of a speech, you see there are eight parts of a speech. You don't have to focus on all, but remember out of the eight parts of a speech, if you can just focus on four, they are nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, just on four, because they are actually content words. They are important for me. So focus on them. Number two, tenses. A very good understanding of tenses. So if you understand the tenses, then of course, you will be able to speak correctly. You will be able to write correctly. Okay. So try to understand the tenses. And they are also very simple. Broadly speaking, there are three tenses. The present, the past, the future. These are the three tenses. And each of them, they have four subtypes. So that makes 12. So if you can understand the tenses correctly, if you understand parts of a speech, and then if you can work on your vocabulary, that will help you be good in English language. Okay. Vocabulary. Now talking about vocabulary, this is something which you need to keep working on. And to improve vocabulary, it is very important that you keep reading. Reading is a very good exercise. If you can just read every day, make reading your daily habit. Every day, you should try to read a paragraph. And the best way, you know, which I keep telling to my students is to read aloud. And, and there are times when we are all by ourselves at home, nobody is around. So it's always a good idea to read something aloud. Try to focus, try to understand. And you have your smartphones also. So record yourself, record a paragraph, and then listen, listen to your voice. Sometimes, you know, what happens that uh, when we speak, we have absolutely no idea how we sound. But when you listen to your recording, you know, you get to understand. Okay, this is how I sound. So are there any shortcomings? Can I make myself any better? So it happens only when you record and you listen to your voice. And it's a very good exercise. You will see if you continue to do this for maybe a month or so, you will see that there is improvement. Make it your habit. I'm not saying that you should read a page, you should read one essay or a big article. No. 
I just want you to read a paragraph every day. And when you read, you know, sometimes you come across a word that is difficult. Sometimes you come across a good phrase. So what do you do? You just underline, try to understand the word, try to understand the phrase. What is the context? How it is used? So the point is that you have to work on it. You have to make a conscious effort to improve your reading, your speaking. And uh, those who teach English, I think they all understand that, you see, there are four skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And out of these four skills, two are receptive skills and two are productive skills. Okay? So can anyone tell me what are receptive skills and what are productive skills? Any one of you? Uh, All right. Writing yes. and uh, writing and uh, speaking is productive skill. I think Very so. Good. Uh, and that learning, is absolutely correct. Writing and, and, and reading and listening, they are receptive skills. Okay. okay? So uh, absolutely correct. And um, thank you very much, Ms. Nasreen Nisha. So writing and speaking, they are productive skills. And reading, listening, they are receptive skills. Why so? Because you receive. When you read something, you are taking information. When you are listening, you are taking information. Okay? Information is coming here. You are receiving something. So they are receptive skills. But when you are writing, when you are speaking, you are producing something. Things are coming out. Others are benefiting from you. Okay? They are productive skills. So all the four skills are important. Never mm -hmm. ever think that receptive skills are not important. They're very important. Okay? Productive, as you all know, as you all understand, that they are important. But receptive skills are equally important okay so when you are listening to someone you should be all ears that is to say that you should try to listen each and every word with attention right and the same goes with reading also when you are reading something you should try to focus try to understand make sure that you understand everything See, the problem is, I have noticed, and this is a very common problem, that when our students, when they start reading something, they don't even understand, and they go to the next paragraph or next page. Okay, They just go on reading without making sure that they have understood. So if this happens, if this is the trend, you have to make sure that students, learners, they understand the content before they go to the next. That is important. How do they do that? And as teachers of English, how can you make your students understand that understanding a paragraph is not very difficult? Always remember that the opening lines, opening lines, are very important, okay? So try to focus on that. The first line of a paragraph, that is actually the topic sentence. We call it the topic sentence. And that gives you a very clear idea. Okay, this paragraph is going to talk about this, okay? So you get some idea. You try to pay attention to the topic sentence and you will see that the following sentences, they are all related. You actually elaborate your point, the point which you mention, which you say in the first line, that is elaborated in further lines. This is what you need to tell your students, and this is what you can do for a better understanding, right? So these are small things which you can just work on, uh, and I'm sure that will help you, that will help the students also. Now, coming to writing and speaking. They are productive skills and they are very 
important skills okay and when you ask students or when you ask anyone of all the four skills which one is the most difficult and uh, i'm very sure that many will say speaking is difficult isn't it why why is it why do you find speaking difficult some say writing is difficult but i have seen that the common answer to this question that is speaking so why is speaking difficult any one of you can you tell me why do you find speaking difficult because I'm of grammar about... mistake because of grammar right okay and anything else lack of confidence also that is another thing so i mean this is a topic you know which we can just go on talking and talking so there are many things when it comes to speaking as you pointed out grammar is very important of course no doubt about that when you are not sure about your grammar when you think that if you start speaking in english you may end up making errors your sentences may not be correct okay so that fear is there that fear keeps lurking and then you become hesitant your confidence is shattered and then you do not speak so this is one reason another thing is that we are we live in a society where we actually do not think about our own self improvement we always think what others are going to say what will be their comments okay so we are too occupied with what others will say if we can only focus on ourselves if we think that see if i have to improve i will just overcome all barriers so that mentality has to be improved you have to overcome your fears your anxiety don't think about others what others will say how they will react okay nothing nothing of that sort you just have to make sure that i have to improve myself i have to improve my communication skills and you overcome your fears you overcome your anxieties okay so the speaking the mental processing you know that has to be very quick and believe me that if you are good in english grammar if you know how to construct sentences if you know how to organize your thoughts logically then you can be a good speaker you can speak and there is absolutely no need to speak fast you can be slow but you can be effective right so sometimes people they worry too much about fluency there is nothing to worry you become fluent as you speak you go on speaking you become fluent you don't have to work on it it comes to you automatically right so start the speaking slowly just make sure that you speak correct english you don't have to speak fast it will come to you slowly gradually you will see that there is a difference and what i asked you to do earlier reading and recording that will help you okay so just see that you are speaking correct english your structures are good and you do it continuously okay try to be among people who speak english that is also very important okay and see i'll just give you a very simple example when you learn driving do you start driving very fast at the initial stage do you do that no you don't do that you're very cautious when you start driving you're very cautious you have learned how to drive but still you're very cautious you drive slow the same goes with language when you are learning a language try to speak slow okay later on you can use language the way you want it will not be difficult for you okay so my point is 
that you should not worry about fluency. You should worry about correct English, speaking correct English. Okay. Another thing which I want to tell you that when you speak, you do not speak for yourselves. Do you? You don't. You are speaking for others to understand. So how can you be effective? You need to be clear. So clarity is a very important point. Your message should be very clear. Remember that. Okay. So clarity is a very important point. Make sure that the other person understands you. Right. Now talking about clarity, how can we have clarity in our speech? That is important for us to understand. As I told you in the beginning, that we are not native speakers of English. Okay. So how do we know what we are speaking that is correct, that is a standard or not? Well, we live in an age where nothing is difficult. You can just check the pronunciation from so many apps from Google. Try to check. If you are not sure of any pronunciation, just check. And the best way is to listen and then repeat. Try to repeat it at least for a couple of times. That will help you. Okay? So that way you can work on pronunciation also. English not being a mother tongue. It is very important for us that we keep checking our pronunciation. Right? So if you can improve your pronunciation, you will be very sure that now I think I'm having clarity in my speech. Right? Another thing which is related to clarity, that is your tone. Intonation pattern. What is that? See, when you speak English, it is never in a flat tone. Never. There is a rise and fall, rise and fall. And how do you achieve that? It has to be there. You know, when you speak English in a very plain tone, in a, like a straight line, nobody will understand you. There has to be rise and fall, rise and fall. Okay? So, Sometimes your tone becomes rising. Sometimes it is falling. So it is a characteristic of English language that there is a rise, continuous rise and fall. So how do you have that in your speech? It is important that you listen carefully. Okay. I have no idea how many of you watch English programs, but let me tell you that news channels, good movies, even animation movies that are for children, they actually help you. They help you improve your English language. And don't watch movies only for entertainment. No, that is a myth. If you think that by watching movies, okay, that is entertainment and you should not watch anything for entertainment. No. Sometimes we watch things, we listen to things for our own betterment, for our own improvement, okay? So these news channels, movies, they actually help us improve our language, right? So that is another thing which you can do to improve your English language, okay? So, um, well, well, it's... 25 minutes past seven. And I think I need to wind up quickly because there are so many things to discuss, which I may not be able to. Another thing which I want to talk about, that is, you see, we, we call it A, B, C. And it is very simple. I'm just trying to do it like this way. A is for appearance. B is for body language. And C is for communication. Okay, three things are important. Your appearance. When you are face to face with a person, always remember that the moment you enter into a room to have a conversation with someone, that person scans you from top to bottom. Okay, so your appearance should be good. You should always be presentable. 
right? In a formal situation, of course. I'm not talking about informal situations, but whenever you are in a formal situation, make sure that you are properly dressed for the occasion. That is very important. Number two is body language. And that is what we call nonverbal communication, which is very important. What is nonverbal communication? Okay. Anything that is not written, that is not a spoken, that is nonverbal. Okay. Your body language, your facial expressions, your hand movements, everything, everything counts. And that is something very, very important. So make sure that you work on that also, nonverbal communication. <clears throat> In fact, there have been so many research and the studies, they tell us that nonverbal communication is more effective than verbal communication. So this is something we need to understand that our body movements, when we talk to someone, how we present ourselves, that is something very, very important. Your eye contacts, whether you look into the eyes of the listener, that is also very important, okay? You need to understand that you have to connect. You have to connect with the other person. And how do you connect? You have to make the other person very comfortable, okay? Never look into the eyes in a very intimidating way, no. When I mean to say that we, when you are having eye contact with your audience, with the listener, it should be in such a way that the other person feels comfortable. And you also think that you are confident. Okay, so these things matter. This is the appearance, your body language, and then comes communication. The moment you start speaking. See, Sometimes when you listen to others, you feel like listening that the other person, that he or she should just go on a speaking. That is the impact of communication. You have to be impactful. How do you become impactful? When you speak correct, when you speak in a good tone. So communication is the key. Remember that. Okay. So you need to work on many areas to improve your communication skills and just make sure that all the four skills are important. You may think that receptive skills are not important, but they are important. And well, what can we say about productive skills? They are of course very important. I wish I could continue. I wish I could tell you more about verbal and nonverbal communication, but because of time constraint, I cannot go on speaking, but just for a minute or so, I can take questions if you have any. Anything you want to know? Well, I think, Antera, uh, well, I, I don't think there are questions, so I'll, I'll end here. I'll end my talk here only. And uh, thank you all very much for joining the session. And I hope that I try to make you understand the importance of communication and how you can work on making your communication effective. Okay. It's a very broad topic. And this topic actually needs time. Okay. So in a span of just 30 minutes, you cannot do justice to the topic, but still, I try to make you understand what it is important to become effective. So thank you very much, and uh, over to Nazir Ahmed Sahab. Thank you, thank sir. You all thank very you, much. sir. Dr. Shreel, a very, very informative and inspiring session you have taken this morning, really. You have given a very new look to our teachers regarding the English language because the, the, the role played by the English language as an international language. And apart from that, the English is to be spoken as it deserves to be spoken. And moreover, you have given the memory, a whole memory to bring to our memory, the parts of his speeches, tense, vocabulary, 
his skills, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, and a powerful new thing we have learned today previous ABC, that is appearance, body language, and communication. These are the new things for us. And moreover, you have explained with a practical thing that is stress and intonation, rise and fall, that was his speaking the language, and to have clarity in message, and mean really it is boosting for us and rejuvenating that you should learn more and more. And people from Sabi, you like such like, inshallah, I request you, sir, please take some more sessions in future also. Don't uh, take inshallah. it as a trouble. Please, just for the sake of the, our teaching community, today, everything we can learn, math, science, and other subjects, but English, we, we are there at the same level where our British was there. And therefore, we want to learn new things from you. Sir, please take more sessions. It is my humble request to you, sir. Thank you. Inshallah. Inshallah. And myself, I extend my hearty thanks to you.